Hello friends, welcome to Loksatta Yashashvi Bhava. Friends, in the last session, we have discussed and studied the various processes, internal processes that take place inside our body. They were digestion, nutrition, absorption, excretion, respiration, circulation, etc. Today, we'll move ahead. I'm sure all of you have seen a police controlling traffic on the road. He also has a whistle in his mouth. Similarly, you would have experienced writing down a telephone number or address with pen and side by side talking to your friend on the telephone. At the same time, while watching cricket, we also see a batsman focusing his attention, that is his eyes on the ball and strikes the ball to the boundary with the help of his hand and then runs across the field. How are all these activities possible simultaneously? Friends, this is nothing but control and coordination, which we will be discussing and studying today in the chapter Regulators of Life. Control. Control is a systematic regulation of activities that take place in our body. Whereas, coordination is the orderly execution of activities. Control and coordination go hand in hand. Control and coordination both attribute to the growth and development of the body. We shall study coordination in plants. In the process of transpiration, water is lost to the atmosphere. Roots absorb water and dissolved minerals from the soil. And this process is nothing but ascent of sap or translocation. Thus, there is coordination taking place in plants. Similarly, in animals, when a plate of food is served before a human being, a morsel of food first enters into the mouth, digestion begins into the mouth, saliva present in the mouth contains enzymes which breaks down starch, further the food is pushed down to the stomach, from the stomach, it passes on to the intestine where it is digested and from the intestine, it gets absorbed. The digested food gets absorbed and is circulated to the different tissues of the body. The undigested matter is excreted out of the body. How do all these processes go on? These processes require a particular system for functioning. Even if one of the organs of the systems does not function properly, the systems will fail. Homeostasis, the maintenance of steady state of different systems of a living organism for optimal functioning is called as homeostasis. Now let's see how coordination happens in plants. In case of plants, when there is coordination happening, there is movement. But movement is either growth dependent or growth independent. Movement or growth in response to the external stimuli is called as tropic movement or tropism. External stimuli are water, light, gravity and chemicals. Let us now understand what is phototropism. When a potted plant is placed near a window, that is the sunlight is entering into the window, sunlight falls on the leaves of the plant. It is observed that the plant slightly bends towards light. The auxin, that is a plant hormone, which is present at the tip of the shoot, helps in the growth of the cell. The auxin gets diffused into the cellular tissues and brings about this movement. This is called as phototrophic movement. Hydrotrophic movement and gravitrophic movement. Root systems of the plant show hydrotrophic movement and gravitrophic movement because roots are present under the soil and they absorb the water and the dissolved minerals present in the soil and hence they show the hydrotrophic movement and the gravitrophic movement. There are certain plants which show the chemotrophic movement that is the presence of pollen tube and when the pollen tube goes 
or passes through the style and meets the ovary for the fertilization. This is called as the chemotrophic movement or chemotrophism. Students, the different plant hormones are auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins and abscisic acid. Auxins and gibberellins are responsible for the growth of the cell, whereas cy cytokinins promote the cellular growth of the cell. The abscisic acid inhibits growth and which leads to wilting of leaves. Now we shall also discuss about the movement that is independent of growth. In case of certain plants like mimosa, which are very, very sensitive, mimosa leaves close when they are touched. This movement is called as seismonastic movement. The movement in response to the stimulus of touch is called as seismonastic movement, which is very, very commonly seen in mimosa plant. Here, conduction takes place through electrical or chemical means. The message is transferred through electrical or chemical means. In case of some other plants like Drosera or Venus flytrap, which are insectivorous plants, these also show such kind of movements. That is, they trap the insects when the insect is in vicinity. This is how the movement takes place, which is independent of the growth. Coordination happens because of the nervous control or because of the chemical control. Human nervous system consists of the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The central nervous system. Central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves or the network of nerves originating from the different parts of the body. Whereas the autonomic nervous system consists of the nerves from the involuntary organs like stomach, heart, lungs, kidneys, etc. Nerves are categorized into afferent nerves and efferent nerves. Afferent nerves carry the information from the sensory organs to the brain, whereas the efferent nerves will carry the information from the brain to the sensory organs. Neurons. Neurons are the specialized nerve cells that transmit electrochemical impulses, whereas neuraglia are the supportive cells which assist neurons in their function. Students, have you wondered as to how can we identify the different tastes with the help of our tongue? This is possible only because of the different regions on the tongue. The tip of the tongue helps us to identify the sweet taste present in the food item. The back portion of the tongue helps us in identifying the bitter taste present in the food item. Whereas the sides of the tongue helps in identifying the sour and salty taste present in the food item. How is this possible? This is only possible because tongue has millions of taste buds present on its surface. These taste buds contain receptors which carry information to the brain. Brain processes this information and then helps us to identify and discriminate between each and every taste. Neuron or a nerve cell consists of wiry structures which are called as the dendrites, a cellular structure at the center with nucleus and an elongated structure which is called as axon. The dendrites which are the wiry structures, they carry the information or receive information from the environment and transmit it to the cellular body in the form of an electrical impulse. This electric impulse is then carried to the axon. The axon is, a, is an elongated structure. At the end of every axon, there is a chemical released which creates a gap which is called as a synapse between the neurons. Thus, the electric impulse is passed from the neuron to the muscular cell. The muscle cell contains protein and because of the protein, the muscle cell is able to show movement or change in the shape. Neurons 
On the basis of function are differentiated into sensory neurons, motor neurons and association neurons. The sensory neurons are the neurons that carry information from the sense organs to the brain and spinal cord. The motor neurons are the neurons which carry information from the brain and spinal cord to the muscular parts, whereas the association neuron performs the integrative function of the nervous system. Friends, I'm sure you'll make use of this video which will help you to gain information, but also make use of the article in Loksatta Yashashvi Bhava which gives detailed information and meticulous information from the chapter. Please keep your textbooks open and also have an article while watching the video. The remaining part of this chapter will be discussed in the next session.